Hey guys, this is Frank from the BI Forums, and in this Arma 3 video, I'll be going over how to configure your openme.sqf file that comes with Bangabob's Enemy Occupation System, which is a great pack of scripts that handles the spawning and caching of di AI units that spawn dynamically in your Arma 3 mission. And a lot of people are having issues with the openme.sqf and setting that up due to outdated information and examples provided in that script. So to get started, let's go to My Documents, Arma 3 Other Profiles, your Arma 3 profile, your missions folder, find the folder that your mission is located in, and in there should be an EOS folder. In there should be an openme.sqf, and that will be the focus of this video. We'll be focusing mainly on lines 3 through 13, and let me ex uh, basically try to explain what all this is. So group sizes, these are just examples right here, a list of examples of what the values are for group sizes. So for example, 0, if you had a a group that spawns in a house and their group size is set to the value of 0, it will spawn one guy. If the value, value is instead set to 1 instead of 0, then it will spawn 2 to 4 guys. So it could spawn 2, 3, or 4 units there, and so on and so forth for group sizes. Next we have our third example, which is what basically our example call. And this is what our call is supposed to look like or used to be what is supposed to look like. Now this example is incorrect and is the primary reason why most people cannot get their EOS to work properly and I will help address that issue right now or in a second actually. So this is the example call we'll be fixing that in this video and this is our ex basically explains what each value means or represents over here. So for example we have marker name for here we have house groups, how many house groups you want to spawn, we'll have two house groups spawn, size of the groups, the size group is one, probability or chance for them to spawn, 70%, and so on and so forth. You get the idea. And it just goes on for like that. And if you notice here, the first issue that I notice is that there's multiple markers being referenced in the same parameter right here. And I find that to be incorrect because it is slower and faulty and you don't ha you cannot basically let me give you an example right down here I have all my markers individually referenced so instead of having it like this you know instead of having multiple markers referenced in the same brackets or in the same array I just have one marker reference and it's basically like that for all markers on the map and this allows me to uni assign unique settings for each marker and it seems to be a faster method as well so Let's basically just change this to one marker. Hopefully you're still with me and I'm not being too confusing. So the first part of this example that it's incorrect is that you want to have just one marker being referenced in this example. You, it still works if you have multiple markers, but I'm telling you it's probably better to have one marker at a time for modularity and it seems to be faster as well. So to get started, or move on rather, Another th issue that I had in the past is that the probability is basically you want to set it either to a low probability or a high probability. My bad for burping, but basically I set this to 100% because I'm making an insurgency style mission. And if you are also making an insurgency style mission, if this is not 100%, then you will go into a grid square and there will be a chance that it will be a totally empty grid square and it will turn blue automatically which is not fun at all. You get you, There is no fun value in that at all. So basically, we're going to keep this at 100, and I would recommend you do the same. The next issue is the second example right here, or I guess it's technically the third example, which is patrol groups, this example right here. So let me explain. Since this is the third, see, one, two, and three, let's explain what this is. Patrol groups. This is basically the parameters or the array for spawning patrols in the marker that you have assigned right here. So on marker 1, there will be zero patrols, but what does this mean? The script gets confused at this point because it says 1, even though we have size groups and probability. There's three sections in this array, yet there's only two. That's incorrect. So basically, what the script is doing is it's going to say spawn zero groups, but then it's getting confused on the size. It's like spawn zero groups, but yet spawn two to four guys. That makes no sense. And so the script can get fucked up from that. So what we're going to do is let's say we want to spawn 
no groups at all patrolling we would do it that way so there's no groups no size zero probability hopefully that makes sense and if you do want to have a patrol walking around let's say we want two patrols walking around we want them to be a size we'll set them to size one and the probability will be 50 percent or 100 percent this is how you would set it up just to give you an example and of course the size of the group of the patrol group right here is set to one if you or whatever you want it to be and of course the group size is, is right here so one equals two to four guys you get the idea next is let's see what's another one that people get messed up on this one right here static weapons static weapons is I think the the almost the last part that is messed up and that is only because there's one example here or one value rather when there should be at least two so let's move over here so we have static weapons and then helicopters and let's look over here static weapons probability or how many static weapons do you want to spawn and what is the probability that they will spawn and that that probability port part was not included so that's where an issue will arise and then helicopters, of course, is right afterwards, but we won't go over that because that's correct. So what this should be is you, if you want two static weapons to spawn, you would set it to, for example, 100% chance for two static weapons to spawn within this marker when it becomes activated. Hopefully that makes sense. And next, the last issue is that there is no height limit or debug set. So for example, right here, it just ends at, uh, what does this stand for? We have the faction set, the marker type, the distance, the side, or f faction basically, and it's missing the height limit and debug. So if you look at my example right here, we have height, the height limit disabled and the debug disabled, so false false. You basically want to do that for yourself as well if, uh, when you use EOS. So we'll do this, false false. And there you go, and that's pretty much, that will fi help fix a lot of issues that you have in using EOS and the OpenMeter SQF. Hopefully this video was helpful. I know it was a little slower than I wanted it to be, but it gets a point across. This alone will help fix you. So to give you a bit more of an example, by the way, let's say you have marker 1, 2, and 3, you do it like this. And what's great is you have more control over what spawns. So maybe you want like three guys spawn here, but a bit of, big of a group. Maybe you want four here, but like small groups, and you could do much more modular stuff with your each individual marker. Every marker can be unique, and that makes the mission more fun. So anyway, hopefully the video was helpful. If you have any questions at all, just put them in the comments below, and I will answer them as quickly as possible and as detailed as possible, maybe. Anyway, hopefully the video was helpful, and if it was, like it. If it wasn't, then dislike it, and like I said, ask any questions you want. And I will see you next time.